What's up, you guys? Um, Paul here again. So uh, I felt God led to leave this short message for our fallen soldiers. And I'm not talking about military. I'm talking about believers. I'm talking about those who have been fighting the good fight, who have been running the race and have finished the race. Um, this goes out to you, my brother. So as we know, we are soldiers for Christ. We are here to not just put up a fight, but to withstand every single evil dart of the enemy. Now, I just want to share a couple of verses with you to strengthen you in case you're getting weak, in case you're stuck in your sin and you think you're not worthy enough to follow God, because you are. If you waited until you were perfect to follow God, if you waited until you were clean to follow God, you will die in your sin because it is impossible. Now, I pray and I urge every single one of you to turn away. Straight up. To be strengthened. I love you guys. My family loves you guys. And the Lord loves you guys. Now, um, today and yesterday has been a little bit of a sad day for me. But um, I count it all joy because God is good. And he is faithful. And he is worthy to die for. Um, my brother Jesus Ramos had passed away today. As far as, I heard, as far as I'm told, his plug was pulled. Um, he had a bad fall. He had a couple of seizures. In the brain just you know now this is a tribute not just for him but for every single brother out there that has passed away in their faith I recently shared a video with uh, the water walkers I'm a part of I'm blessed to be a part of uh, that I will share to me by the gates of the Jesus crew I'm with and it's Christians who are being persecuted all across the United States everywhere Christians are being persecuted Christians are being killed are being just annihilated. Their families, their children, their kids. For what? For drugs? For gangs? Something worthless and pathetic? And no, for Jesus. For speaking truth. For speaking life to those who are still bound and stuck in their iniquity. What does that bring you? Addiction? What does that bring you? Pain, depression, anxiety? No, it brings you freedom. Now, we're all human beings. And we all struggle with our sin. And no matter who you are watching this, you struggle with it. There's no pride that can cover that. Looking at a woman, looking at a man, TV, TikTok, all the junk you have on your phone, or when you go to Walmart, you're being married. Or whether you go to work, cursing, drinking, smoking, double-sided, addictions. But you know what makes a real follower? What's in your heart? Are you trying to change? Are you changed? Are you trying to fight for truth, for God's honor and glory and blah, blah, blah? Or for your own? I don't know about you, but I don't post these videos so all you can be like, oh, this is that, or, or, or so I can get famous, or so I can get money, or so I can be seen. I can care less, dude, if I get blocked, dropped, or just canceled out. You, uh, Facebook already tried to warn me that I'm posting too many videos and that it's considered hate speech and stuff like that. I posted some of the things that they sent me. Other stuff I wasn't able to screenshot to post. Crazy, huh? How can they block my screenshots? When only banking information and stuff for security purposes can be screenshotted. I do it because the love of God burns inside of me. And I feel for people that need it. Because I did too. Stuck in, in my own things. Stuck in, in, in my own uh, iniquities. Not to get specific. But you know what? My brother Jesus, primarily speaking right now. 
He is the real life testimony. He's a real life testimony of giving it all unto the all the way to the grave. Even though he was human, he fought every single day to get right with God. He fought every single day to get more knowledge with God. He fought every single day to be a good father. He fought every single day to be a good man, be a good man. Which after his surgery, he was going to be a husband because he was already proposing. I don't even know if he still has the ring around there laying around. But be a good son, be a good friend, be a good brother, whatever. And every single day, he would seek the Lord. He would call me. We would go to events together. We would go to the mission and preach together, all to the lost souls. Fired up. What are you doing to raise heaven in this hell we call earth? What are you doing? Now, Colossians 3, 23, 24, if you can open your Bible. If you're going to go on your Bible lap, just listen to me, bro. Don't even mess with it. Uh, open up the word if you have it. Colossians 3, 23, 24, and it says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive your inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. Now, I don't just speak for my brother Jesus and for all my brothers and sisters and for myself, but I don't seek to please any one of you guys. I don't seek to please anybody but my Lord, my God, my Savior, who doesn't just have the power to calm the oceans, the seas, the storms, to cast out demons, but to raise the dead. But to raise the dead, that's the type of power that my father has. And you know the beautiful thing and the crazy thing that he says? The greater things you will do in my place. Greater things. That's pretty intense. But yet we lack faith. We lack faith to even resurrect the dead person. We lack faith to even pray for someone for COVID and they get healed. Some of us anyways. We lack faith, period. Now I saw my brother's heart and he was a man of God and I know that he passed with God burning inside of him. So he's in glory right now. And you know what? If you have a loved one that has passed, guess what? They're in glory right now if they died with Christ in their heart. If not, then I'm sorry because I have some that didn't and have some that did, but I'm not naive to the truth. I'm accepted to it. And he died with the Lord in his heart. We are all called people. I can be preaching to you right now. Someone can come up to my window and shoot me in the head. It's happened in neighborhoods. It really has happened. We never know. We never know. So what are you going to do with the little time you have? Because one day you're going to die. And it's not about what you're remembered for. It's about how you fulfilled your purpose as a soldier for Christ. And what he tells you when you go up there. Good job, my faithful servant. Or bro, what were you doing the whole time you were down there? You missed the point of the life that I gave you. I don't know about you, but I want to hear the first one. Now, if you're feeling a little weak, if you feel a little tired, 2 Colossians 4, 16 and 18. Go to 2 Colossians 4, 16 and 18. Highlight it. I like to just draw boxes around it or underline it. It says, therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an external glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not to what is seen, but on what it is unseen, since we, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. We walk by faith, not by sight. 
We walk by faith, not by sight. Romans 5, 3 to 4. Not only so, but we also glory in our suffering because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character and character produces hope. Hebrews 12, 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. You're running your race today. When you get that finish line, when you pass away, how far did you really get from the start from the start line? Did you make disciples out of your wife and your kids like you're supposed to? Man? Lady? If your man is lacking the freaking backbone to man up, go to church, be a man of God, and know what he's really supposed to do and be as a man. The word says that you are in charge of raising those disciples and to taking them to church. And how build your man so he can see what his destiny is supposed to be as his right hand, as his neck. Are you doing that? Or are you hindering him, if he is a man of God, for allowing him to step up and taking that place because you're more dominant? All in all, what are you all doing in your own life, in your spiritual walk? Now those men of God, those women of God who have made it, who have passed away, fighting hard, much respect and I wish that we're all here to tell him that I wish I can tell my, my my brother Jesus man again that I'm very proud of him because he's on fire more and more and more because more souls are being saved because of his obedience and because of his testimony more people are coming to God but you know what his death will speak multitudes and I hope not just to you if I'm speaking to his family but to everyone else out there for he did not seek to please you straight up I talk to him all the time for the most part he sought to please God just like I do and in pleasing God it changes us into being a better husband, a better father, a better son, a better friend, a better whatever. Because once you accept the fact that God surrounds everything in this world, everything in your life, it will change and mold the way you speak, the way you act, the way you do things. So let it be a testimony of faith. Let it be a testimony of power. Because if you do good, if you change your ways and if you come to God, you will reap the harvest that is beyond anything you can get with your overtime at work. Trying to make all that money. Galatians 6, 9 says, Let us not become weary in doing good. For, the pro for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. We will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Remember that. I love you guys. And I really hope that his testimony that my testimony, that your testimony will be heard across mountains and mountains and mountains. Because even though we are soldiers for God, it still hurts to lose one another. But that's the sacrifice, people. For to live is Christ and to die is gain. Until my death, I will fight, not just for you, not just for my family, but for my God. Now in the name of Jesus, I proclaim peace 
prosperity, strength, everything. Everything. It's time to soldier up. This was for you, Brother Jesus. I love you, bro. And you'll be missed. Freaking soldier right there, man. Real soldier right there. I love you guys.